Hey guys, how's it going? Chez back again with episode number 21 of the AC Milan career mode here on Xbox One. This is the start of the final week of the first season at AC Milan. Today and tomorrow's episodes will round out all of the Serie A action. And then of course we've got a cup final to come later on in the week. But as we start this one, we're coming into it on the back with some very, very good form on last Friday's episode in which we picked up three victories, two 2-0 two wins and a 3-0 victory. The current season sit fourth in the league with six games to go. So we definitely still have it all to do if we want to qualify for next year's Champions League. Of course, as we've covered many times throughout this season, it's only the top three that qualify for the Champions League in Italy, not the top four, as is the case in England. So if we can get into the Champions League, we're going to need wins and wins fast and potentially goals as well. So uh, we're getting off to a decent start here in this one, trying to create some chances against the Catania, but they came close there, drawing the, uh, the shot into the side netting that... Weirdly, almost ended up looking like it was in the back of the net, the way it kind of got entangled in the, in the net itself. But fortunately, they weren't able to take the lead there. And we push into the second half, and we're going to get a chance of our own. It's Alexander Lacazette, breaks three. The ball squirms outside underneath the goalkeeper, and unfortunately, he isn't quite able to get across the line before the defender hooks it clear. But the chance isn't gone just yet. Kozuki Honda picks the ball up on the edge of the box, drives forward, and uses that left foot to draw another good save out of the, uh, the Catania goalstopper. And uh, unfortunately, again, we aren't able to get ourselves in front but we kept pushing Victor Ruiz coming up from the back finding Alexander Lacazette lovely turn inside with the uh, Ronaldo chop and that is a clinical finish he's got absolutely no right to be able to squeeze that in from there around the goalkeeper into the far bottom corner holding off the attentions of two perhaps even three defenders to uh, to show the presence of mind to be able to slot it tidily into that far corner and that gives us a good 1-0 lead a deserved 1-0 lead but still a very very good composed finish from Alexander Lacazette there was exactly what we needed at that moment in time to give us the impetus or the impetus rather to to push on and uh, get a second goal here which is exactly what we're going to do from Kaizuki Honda again it's cutting in from the outside this time it's a symmetrical attack on the other side of the field Kaizuki Honda cutting in on his left as opposed to Alexander Lacazette cutting in on his right and a very very similar finish really nice composed finesse finish into the far corner he made three changes after that just to make sure every single part of the team had a little bit extra strength in it the attack the midfield and the defence as well so we could hold out for the win maybe even extend the lead if we possibly could Balotelli's going to find Adam Yates who gets taken down the, uh, the defender just got absolutely nowhere near the ball he can run and rave as much as he wants it's a clear penalty you'll be able to see from the replay he's just too physical with Adam Yates breaks into the box the ball's not even on the screen yet by the time the uh, the foul is made Yates goes down as he has every right to do Mario Balotelli's going to step up he doesn't miss many penalties but he misses this one unfortunately so we stay at 2-0 in stoppage time at the end of the second half and that is how the game was going to finish so unfortunately not able to extend the lead a little bit further but nonetheless three points were the, the original aim, the main aim and any extra goals after that were just a little bit of a bonus but we're coming into the second game now against Livorno at home again now well, Livorno are a good side we made a couple of rotation changes as you can see uh, Rubinho is starting at left attacking mid and also we've got Adil Rami starting at centre back as well but we'll pop the, uh, the league tap the leaked up the league table up on your screen just about now as you can see we've still sat fourth two points behind inter three points behind roma five points off the top of the league so it's very very tight there as we head into the fifth game of or not the fifth game but it's the fifth game to go i guess technically but Livorno coming close they're drawing a great save out of victor guita he had to be sharp on his reflexes at that near post there to keep Livorno out and actually they were quite dominant in the opening stage of series you can see it's going to be them having another chance greco breaking into the box actually draws the foul from the defender there it's a rather clumsy challenge uh, really poorly timed it's um matthias silvestre i believe that gave away the foul and again you'll see from the replay it's a clear penalty the ball is nowhere near. He sticks his leg in and the, the lad just goes over it. You can't blame him for going over it. It definitely was a penalty. Paulinho steps up, hits the post. That's two penalties missed so far in this episode. And Guita had to be on his reactions yet again to be able to get down and save the second attempt there from the Livorno attacker. And this time we're able to come away and uh, perhaps have a chance of our own at the other end as we head into first half stoppage time. Montalivo finding a little bit of space, drawing a good opportunity. But unfortunately, it flashes across the face of the goal and out past that far post and away for a goal kick. So we push into the the second half again still drawing at nil nil trying to make the difference Balotelli with the effort but it's a scuffed effort and we just weren't firing on all cylinders and the attacking sense in this game and it's actually Livorno again 
into uh, the last half an hour now. The Ermagara playing down the uh, the right hand side draws a good save out of Victor Guitha. Again, we've had to rely on him a few times this season. He's been a very very good signing for us. Of course, rotating him in with Christian Abiati as well. Abiati will be leaving the club at the end of the season. He is retiring, so uh, we won't have him for the second year. We will need a replacement though. But uh, for now, Victor Guitha doing a very very good job in goal and again getting down well to uh, deny the Livorno striker. We push even further towards the end of the game now. Rubinho breaking down the left is a lobbed ball to the back post. Lulic trying to pull it back across, but sadly the goalkeeper is stood up tall and strong and able to cut out the cross before the, any threat or any further threat is made to Livorno's goal. So he puts into second half stoppage time. They're on the attack, but Abu Diaby showing great determination there to break the ball away from the defender or the midfielder. Plays through Mario Balotelli. He's got the attention of two on him. Gets shrugged off it, but they're loose with possession. Diaby into Balotelli, finds the bottom corner. 90 plus 3 was the time on the clock. You'll see from the end, uh, the end picture here, it's 95th minute winner from Mario Balotelli. Could that goal be crucial in our move or in our drive up the league looking for Champions League football for next season? If that goal was important, this next game is even more important. It's away from home against Roma, the team that are above us in the league as we head into this game. You'll see again from the league table that's going to pop up on your screen around about now. They are literally one point ahead of us. So winner takes all in this game. The winner of this game will head second in the league. Now we drew with them earlier on in the season in the league at home 2-2. Although in the Coppa Nazionale we were able to run out 2-0 winners in the cup. So I was a little bit more confident than I perhaps would have been had we only had the experience from the earlier 2-2 draw against them. So I was hoping that we could put in a good performance here away at the Stadio Olimpico and actually pick ourselves up a victory. But Daniele De Rossi breaks into the box there and we get very very lucky with a great last ditch challenge from the defender that squirms the ball out away for a corner eventually but nothing actually came of it and then Stefan El Shuari breaking down lovely turn and uh, Ronaldo chop there to brain Andrea Polly brings it down beautifully excellent second touch and squeezes it underneath the goalkeeper into the back of the net as the clock reads 23-23 we take a 1-0 lead away from home against well let's be honest Champions League rivals here Roma we it's a case of us Roma and Inter the three teams vying for those two Champions League spots and Miralem Miralem Pjanic plays the ball into the box there Mario Mandzukic with an absolutely phenomenal header that's the sort of header you're used to seeing on ultimate team let alone in career mode but beautiful uh, stood up cross from Miralem Pjanic and uh, Mario Mandzukic that's what he's all about he is that strong in the air and uh, they deserved to uh, to bring it back to 1-1 on the balance of play in the, in the uh, in the first half it was very much an even game as we headed into the second and it's Michel Bastos on the ball player that isn't on ultimate team this year because he's come uh, you know moved to Roma from a team that aren't necessarily in the ultimate team database but uh, doing the business for Roma they're putting the ball in and Mario Mandzukic with another chance for a header there that unfortunately for them fortunately for us goes wide of the far post but Roma is still on the attack it's Mandzukic making the running yet again cheeky ball roll a nice turn finds himself with him space and draws a good save out of Victor Guita but he's been the difference for us in this episode alone he's definitely kept us in games crucially in that Livorno game so that we can nick a last minute winner and Kazuki Honda finds Stefan El Shirawi on the overlap here Decent finessed finish, but Morgan de Sanctis plucks the ball out of the air. Really, really uh, easy. You know, it was an easy height for him. It was not the um, the most difficult of saves. But 10 minutes from time, it's Matteo de Cilio breaking in from uh, from left back into Mario Balotelli. Finds Nigel de Jong, of all people, on the overlap, breaking up from holding mid and actually wins us the game in the 81st minute. Can you believe it? Nigel de Jong, the goal scorer, and actually they were going to make a change just before uh, full time. We're actually going to see Kaká coming on against his former employers. Of course, we did the cash plus player swap deal for Adam Yates earlier on in the season, and I thought it'd give Kaká another bit of a showing, even if he does look a little bit weird in a, in a Roma kit. But that was how the game was going to finish. A massive, a ginormous three points. You cannot underestimate how important that win is for us as a whole overall as we head into the final episode of league play tomorrow. Milan sits second in the league, just five points behind Juventus, although they do have a game in hand, it is, uh, it is right to, uh, to point that out. And also in to have a game in hand on us, four points behind, and Napoli have two games in hand, seven points behind. So there's so many teams still vying for those three Champions League spots. Tomorrow's episode is going to be an absolute 
belter. We need to make sure that we can win games if we want that Champions League football. But that's going to bring today's episode to a close, guys. Thank you very much for watching. If you missed the previous episode from this series, there's an annotation on screen on the right-hand side to take you to it from last Friday. We had our international debut in the My Player series yesterday, so feel free to check the channel page if you missed that video. Of course, if you aren't subscribed to the channel already and you'd like to do so to make sure you don't miss out on any of the content on my channel, there's a link in the description, your normal subscribe button, and an annotation on screen on the left-hand side there. And feel free to follow me on Twitter as well, at Chesnoy Gaming, to make sure you stay up to date with everything that happens on my channel and with me as well. There's a link to that in the description as well. But that's all for today, so thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.